welcome to my channel. My name is Dina. Thank you so much for being here. On this episode of Lipstick Looks, we dived into a coral lip. So if you're interested in seeing how I got this coral lip look, then I'll meet you right back here in a sec. So personally, I like my makeup to be a little bit more on the matte side. That's how I like to wear my makeup every day. But for this peach coral lip tutorial, I want it to be really bronzy and really dewy. So I'm going to show you how I like to make my skin dewy. So in order to achieve that, we're going to need our moisturizer. And then we're also going to need these Lumi Drops. These are from Cover FX. They are liquid highlighters that you can either wear by themselves or you can add them to your moisturizer. I personally like to add it to my moisturizer because it looks a little bit more natural. So I'm going to start Start off by taking my Sofi moisturizer. I'll go ahead and link this for you down below. It's a really nice lightweight moisturizer that doesn't have any sunscreen in it if you want something really, really lightweight. So I'm just going to take a little bit of moisturizer and put that on the back of my hand. And then I'm also going to take these drops and I'm going to do one full drop because it is very concentrated. So you don't want to do too much. So I'm just going to do one full drop right on top of the moisturizer. And then I'm going to mix this on the back of my hand before I take it directly onto my skin. So that way my skin does look dewy, but it almost looks naturally hydrated and naturally radiant. You don't really see this like liquid stripe or highlighter on the face directly. So once you're done combining that onto your skin, you're going to take a damp beauty blender. Always use the tip of the beauty blender, never use the back of the beauty blender. It will leave a mark, a stamp, so it won't be seamless and airbrushed. So I'm just going to go ahead and take this. I like my skin to be a little bit dewy wherever I put highlighter. So you don't want your skin to be shiny all over. You just want it to be highlighted just in the areas where you want to accentuate. So for example, your cheekbones, your nose. So I'm just going to go ahead and place this right over here. And you can see how instantly it kind of gives like a little bit of radiance and it makes my skin look a little bit hydrated as soon as it reflects the light. And then I'm just going to add a teeny bit on this side. So on my cheekbones down on my T-zone, my cupid's bow, and then right up the middle of the brow and on top of the brows to lift and arch the brow. Great. So always take a step back, take a look in the mirror, see the highlight, see the highlighter, see if you want to add more. So I personally feel like I just want to do a little bit more. I feel like I can get away with it being a little bit more radiant. You can always add products, but you can't really take it away. You don't want to ruin your makeup. So always do a little bit at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and add just a teeny bit more. Great. And then I'm going to, again, mix this on the back of my hand. Perfect. And then I'm going to take my damp beauty blender and apply this right on the cheekbone. There we go. Now you can see that highlight. Isn't that beautiful? It really, really makes your skin look super luminous, very hydrated, very dewy. If you want to achieve a dewy look with just a highlighter, if you have a matte powder and a matte foundation, it's not going to give you that dewy effect. So it's very important that you do wear a dewy moisturizer underneath your foundation just to avoid your skin looking overly matte. Great. So again, right on top of the brow. Perfect. And then whatever is left over on the back of my hand, I'll just go ahead and take this all over my skin just so that way it is seamless and blended, but I'm not taking that highlighter and putting it directly there. I'm just taking whatever's left over. So now that our skin is prepped and primed, now we're going to go ahead and move forward with makeup. So now I'm going to use my favorite corrector. So this is for under the eyes. If you just use a concealer under your eyes, it doesn't cover any discoloration. A concealer is more yellow based or more orange base, which what doesn't really cancel out any darkness. If you want something to specifically cancel any darkness out under your eyes, you want to be sure to use a corrector. A corrector has a little bit of a blue undertone, a little bit of a green undertone, depending on what you're trying to cover exactly. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my corrector from Bobbi Brown and I'm just going to place it right at the inside corner of my eye. Now what's really cool about a under eye corrector, you don't have to place it all over like an under eye concealer. You can just place it in the areas where you have darkness. So for example, a lot of people have darkness right on the inside corner in the crease right over here and then right on the outside corner. So you can see when I look at you directly in the camera how instantly it kind of deep puffs the eye and kind of gets rid of that dark circle. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Great, now once I'm done applying my corrector in between steps, I like to blend my work. So I'll just take my damp beauty blender, go ahead and blend that corrector. Now once I'm done applying my under eye corrector, now I'm going to move in with my concealer, 
So I'm just gonna take the concealer and put it on the back of my hand. You always wanna warm the product on the back of your hand first before you take it directly onto your skin. This will make the product look more natural and actually blend to your skin a lot better and adhere better to the skin. So again, I'm just gonna take the tip of my beauty blender, dip it into my under eye concealer, and I'm just gonna place this right up underneath my eye. And the same thing on the other side. So now the concealer is actually going to conceal any discoloration. It's also gonna give you that added brightness and luminosity underneath your eyes. So it's very important that you do wear two products. If you have to pick only one, definitely go with the concealer because it is more skin tone correct. You don't want your under eyes looking peachy or pinky. So I'm just gonna finish up blending my under eye concealer. And then as soon as we're done, doing the under eye concealer, we're gonna move forward with the foundation. Now the foundation that I'm currently using right now is from shopmissa.com. It's only $1.88. I've been using it for about a month now and I'm absolutely obsessed with it. I did a review if you guys wanna check it out. I definitely think that it's worth the buy. Great, so once you're done applying your under eye concealer, now we're going to move forward with the foundation. So this is the one that I was telling you about. It comes in a liquid dropper and you can use as much as you like. It's actually pretty um, full coverage. I would definitely say it's medium to full coverage. So now I'm just gonna do the same thing, apply it on the back of my hand, take my damp beauty blender and apply this all over the face. Whenever you're applying your foundation, always start with the center of the face because this is where we need the most coverage. A lot of people don't really need that much foundation out here. So always start at the center of the face wherever we need the most coverage and then you can go ahead and blend it outward. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up my foundation and then as soon as I'm done with my foundation, I'll go ahead and meet you guys right back here where I'm gonna show you what bronzer and what blush goes with a coral lip. So I'll be right back. Great, now once you're done with your foundation, now we're gonna go ahead and set our foundation using our powder. Always set your foundation using stippling motions. Never swipe on your foundation. You will remove the coverage and put streaks on your foundation. So it's very important that you stamp the foundation and stipple it just like this. I'm pretty generous with my foundation because I do tend to perspire on my T-zone and I find it that it does kind of not last on me um, throughout the day. So I kind of like to do just a little bit extra on my chin and on my nose. So if you guys have any areas where you feel like foundation doesn't really stick, you can go ahead and do that as well. Great. Now, once you're done setting your foundation, now we're going to move on to bronzer. So since we are doing a peach coral, I really want to play up the bronzer and just make it really visible and really gorgeous. So I'm just going to take my KKW Beauty Bronzer. So as you can tell, this one is a little bit more true to its color. It is a bronzer. And then I'm also going to use this cool tone bronzer to accentuate and contour. So you always want to start off with your bronzer first. And then once you're done, you can go in and chisel and define the areas. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add my bronzer. So I'm gonna place it down on my neck, so right over here. And then once you're done placing it down on the neck, you wanna place it right at the high part of your cheekbone. Now, a lot of people will take their bronzer and put it right up underneath, right over here. So they'll do the top of their ear to the corner of their mouth and go down here. You never wanna bring your face downward. This is way too low. So always keep your bronzer up high. So right over here, right at the high part of the cheekbone. You can see once I'm done how it really does elevate the cheekbone. So I'm just gonna take this right over here and also too, don't be shy or scared to touch your hairline. If the product does touch your hairline, it looks more natural. If you see where the product stops, then obviously it looks like you have bronzer on. So to avoid that, be sure to touch your hairline and if your hair is blonde, you can go ahead and wipe it with a towel afterwards. Great, so once you're done and happy with the bronzer, go ahead and move on to the next side. Again, touch the hairline, stippling motions. We're not swiping the bronzer because we don't want to ruin the powder in the foundation that we did underneath. So the same concept goes for color as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and stipple on the bronzer just like that. And then I'm going to take it down on my neck so that way it looks natural. And also, too, the sun hits us directly onto our face and on our forehead. So we don't really get a lot of color on our neck. So it's very important that we do bring that color down to our neck as well. Great. So I'm just going to take a teeny bit more and just kind of finesse it right over here. And then we don't want to forget our nose. Now, I don't really like a harsh contour on my nose, so I'll just take a little bit with my um, bronzer brush and I'll take it right at the tip of the nose. This shortens and lifts the nose. And then I'll take it right down the sides of the nose and just kind of buff it in the direction that I want to enhance without taking that physical stripe and putting it down on my nose. So you still get that nice, beautiful contour, but again, it's not costumey. 
Great. Now, once you're done with that, now we're going to go ahead and contour, which is so much fun. Now, for contouring, I like to use an angled brush. All of the brushes that I am using for the face and eyes are all under $8. I'll go ahead and link them for you down below. For example, this one is only $1 from Shop Miss A, and it is absolutely amazing. Definitely comparable to a $50 brush. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and place it right up underneath my jawline. So for contour, you don't want to place it where you put the bronzer. You only want to place this wherever you want to enhance your natural features or create features. So if you don't really have a defined jawline, you can really play up the jawline and really make it look more defined. And then you can also take a little bit of the contour powder and put it right up underneath the bronzer to give you that chiseled effect and hollow out the cheekbones. And then I also like to take a little bit of the contour powder and just place a little teeny bit right up on my forehead as well. Great. Now, once you're done with that, go ahead and move on to the other side. Take a teeny, teeny bit, put it on your forehead, just so that way everything looks natural. And then we're also going to take that contour powder and we're going to place it right up underneath the bronzer right over here. Same thing. You'll notice I'm doing stippling motions. And then we're going to take it right up underneath the jawline to really define that jawline and then also put some under your chin right here. I love putting contour right up under the chin. This is great if you maybe have a double chin or if you want to erase this area right over here. It really does kind of chisel out that area too, which makes it look really pretty. Now, um, for the nose, whenever whatever's left over on my contour brush, that's what I like to take onto my nose. So I don't like to go back in. I'll just take whatever's left over since we do have bronzer, and I'll just focus it right down the bridge of my nose, and then I'll do it right on the other side of the bridge, so right over here, and then whatever's left over, I'll do it right at the tip. So you'll see I do get that really nice natural contour without any physical stripes. Great. Okay, so now that we're done with our bronzer, now we're gonna move on with our transition shade because we don't wanna go in with our blush just yet. It's not gonna blend and look even. So I'm gonna go in with this color right down here. So you can see it's a really beautiful pinky bronzy color. And I'm just gonna place this right over here. So usually we place our blush right at the apple of the cheek. So right behind the apple of the cheek, right over here, right before our bronzer is where we're gonna take that transition blush. And you'll see once I'm done applying it, how it really does start to transition into a really beautiful blush color. Great, so I'll take a look at you right in the camera and you can see how it goes from bronze to a really beautiful bronzy pink. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side right over here. So you can even smile too if you want a reference, a guide. So you can smile and see how I'm putting it right behind the apple of my cheek. Now I'm just gonna take a teeny bit more and just place it right over here so when I look at you in the camera you can see how it's starting to blend. Now once we're done with the transition blush now we're going to move on to our actual blush. This blush I purchased from uh, shopmissa.com for only a dollar. They have a beautiful variety of blushes and I absolutely am obsessed with the formula. They are very soft, very blendable and I love this color especially for a peach lip. You never want to do pink on your cheeks. Pink with peach does not match so this soft coral really bright beautiful peach goes really beautifully with a coral lip. So that's why I kind of invented lip looks. I just want to show you guys, you know, how your makeup should look with your lipstick. A lot of people don't know how to match colors with their eyes, face, and lips. So I'm really excited to show you what I came up with. So now I'm just going to take this really bright peachy color and I'm going to place it at the highest part of my cheekbones. You never want to place the blush too low. You always want to keep it up pretty high. So right up underneath your concealer is where you want to put your blush. And also be sure to keep your blush a finger away from the nose. So that way you don't bring any redness around your nose area to avoid making you look sick. So just take it right over there. Great. Now once I'm done adding blush to my cheeks, I like to take whatever's left over on my powder brush and just take this one time all over the work that we just did and it kind of puts like a thin veil of powder all over the work that you just did to make everything look like you're blushing from within so it almost looks and mimics the look of skin. Now once we are done with our blush, I am going to add a little bit of highlighter. So this highlighter actually comes with the transition blush. This is from shopaoa.com as well. I'll go ahead and link this for you down below. This is one of my favorite highlighters I have used in years. It makes your skin almost look wet, which I love. A lot of highlighters have a sheen or sparkle, which looks very obvious and it doesn't really look natural. So the fact that this one gives a wet and dewy effect just really goes with the look that we're going for. So now I'm just going to take the highlighter and place it right at the top of my cheekbone right over here. 
And we also have the moisturizer, don't forget, mixed with the Lumi Drop. So placing that underneath and then placing a highlighter, this is gonna grab onto that moisturizer and just enhance the highlighter. So you can see how it overall just makes your skin look so beautiful, so dewy, so radiant, and it really does reflect the light so beautifully. I'm absolutely obsessed with this highlighter. Now, once you're done placing it on the cheekbone, just take a little bit right up over your brow. And then I like to take a teeny bit and just take it right on the tip of my nose. I don't like to do a long stripe down my whole nose. That will make your nose look bigger. And then I'll take a little bit and put it right over here, right on the cupid's bow. And then same thing, we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. So right up on top of your cheekbone, right over here. I'm just gonna take a teeny bit more, place that right up on top of my cheeks and then right up over my eyebrows. Great. Now, once we are done with highlighter, we're gonna move on to eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my eyeshadow palette and I'll meet you right back here. Okay, so now that we are done with our face, we are gonna move on to the eyes. So for this look, I want it to be really bronzy and really peachy to kind of stick with the theme. So I'm gonna be using my KKW Beauty Classic Palette. You can really get so many looks out of this palette. So I highly recommend this palette. It is very, very beautiful and the formula is amazing. So I already have my eyeshadow primer and my basic eyeshadow set on my eyes. If you guys have any questions on how I achieve this look or if you guys need help picking out your personal basic eyeshadow set colors, you can refer back to any of my rainbow eyeshadow tutorial videos or you can refer to my eyeshadow tutorial video. So that gives you some really great tips on how to achieve this basic eyeshadow look before we start moving into any color. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and start moving in with color. So for this look, I want it to be really peachy and really bronzy. So I'm gonna go in with this flesh tone peach color right over here. And I'm gonna use my um, smaller version of my blending brush. So this is your traditional blending brush right over here. And this is the smaller version. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that one. Again, all of my brushes are from e.l.f. under $8 and very, very effective. So I'm just gonna dip into this really beautiful peach color right over here. Always be sure to tap off the excess and then I'm just gonna place this right in my crease. So I'm not gonna take it all the way over to the outside corner. I'm just placing it right over here. So right at the inside corner of my crease. Great. Now once I'm done with that, I'm just gonna add a teeny bit more because again, you always wanna do everything in layers. So start at the crease and then gently kind of bring it downward. Great, now once you're done with that, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So start by placing it in the crease and go back and forth and then add a teeny bit more right in the same area. Let's add a teeny bit more right over here and then bring it downward. Great, now once we are done with that, I am going to dip into this really beautiful bronzy color right over here using the same brush. But I'm actually going to wet the brush with my makeup setting spray because I want it to be really intense and really bronzy. Always uh, wet the brush, never the product. You will damage the product. So just wet the brush and then it will dry back to normal. And it really does just pick up a lot of color. And it also makes it more intense. So I'm just going to take this bronzy color and I'm going to place it all over my eyelid from the inside corner of my eye right to the halfway point. So you'll see that I'm stopping right at my pupil. So halfway is where you wanna take this specific bronzy color. And again, I do want it to be really intense. So I'm just gonna do two layers of that bronze, but you can see one layer, how super intense that is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and layer this. So again, I'm doing stippling motions because I want it to be more concentrated. I want it to be really electric and really intense. So for that reason, I am doing stippling motions. Beautiful, so you can see how that bronze fades into that really, really pretty peachy pink, and then it kind of goes to the brown. So now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Whatever you do to one side, always mimic on the other side. So if you're gonna wet the brush, wet the brush on the other side as well. Don't rely, it on, don't rely on it being too wet. So now same thing, you're just gonna place this right on the inside corner. Great, now once you're done adding that really beautiful bronzy color, always have a clean brush on hand. If you don't have a lot of brushes to use, Shop Miss A has this really amazing in-between eyeshadow brush cleaner that you can take your brush on. It's a dry sponge and it does clean your brush in between uses. So this is great if you don't have a lot of brushes to use. So I really, really love that. So now take your clean eyeshadow brush. So this is used to blend out all the work that we do. So always have one just to specifically blend your makeup. And we're just gonna take the tip of the brush and we're just gonna soften the work that we just did just to make sure that there is no harsh lines so that P 
peachy coral eyeshadow really blends to the brown so you can see how it really does just soften the work that we just did so now I'm just going to do the same thing on this side I'm just going to soften the work and now I'm going to wipe off my brush completely and now I'm just going to gently go over the bronzy eyeshadow just so that way it blends with the coral eyeshadow great now once we are done with that I'm just going to go in with this really beautiful almost rose gold color right over here and I'm going to use this um, really big fluffy brush so I'm just going to take a little bit of that this kind of goes with the coral and bronzy theme and I'm just going to place this right at the top part of my crease because I do want that coral color just to be a little bit reflective so it's literally right on top of it so you can see how I'm placing it right on top of it and it kind of makes it look a little bit more rose gold and a little bit more reflective great now once we are done with that now we're going to define our eyes a little bit so for this look I'm going to go between the soft brown and the purple right over here. So I'm going to use my really fine brush. This one is used specifically for underneath the lashes and also right over here on the outside corner. So I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to go in between both colors. If I just did that color right over here, it's going to be too dark. And if I did this, it's not going to give me that definition that I'm looking for. So feel free to mix colors. And you can see how when you mix the color, it gives you a really beautiful chocolate brown. So it's the perfect shade. Now for this, go ahead and grab your handheld mirror because you want to look up really high and you're just going to place this right up underneath your lash line and then also place it right at the outside corner right over here. So that way you are connecting the two lash lines and also it's giving you a little bit more of a smoky effect. So I'm just going to do the same thing just to show you. So I'm going to coat both sides of my brush, coat both sides of my brush, and then I'm going to mix them together on the back of my hand. And then I'm going to take my handheld mirror and I'm going to look all the way up and sweep this right up underneath my lashes. Perfect, now once you're done placing that at the outside corner of your eye, now I wanna focus on the inside corner of our eye. So for this step, you're gonna need a synthetic brush and we're also gonna use our under eye concealer. So just take a little bit of the under eye concealer and place it onto the back of your hand. And then we're going to dip in our synthetic brush to our under eye concealer. Perfect, and really make sure it's on both sides of the brush. And for this step, you wanna place it right at the inside corner of your eye, so right over here. So right at the tear duct is where I want to place this because I'm going to take a loose powder pigment and place this right on top because I really want the inside corner to be super, super bright. So in order for the eyeshadow to really grab on, you, really, you need to use a um, under eye concealer. So again, just take a little bit of that concealer, just place it onto the tear duct. This is really, really, really gonna make that eyeshadow just super, super intense. So you can already see how that's a great base for any pigment that we're about to add on. Now, once you're done with that, we're going to take a traditional eyeshadow brush, so just your basic eyeshadow brush. And I'm gonna dip into this really beautiful loose eyeshadow pigment. This is um, from Shop Miss A as well. It is their Power Lighter. So I'm just gonna swatch it for you just to show you how beautiful it is. And it definitely goes with the, um, coral theme. So I did a little swatch for you right over here and you can see how beautiful, how gold it is. And I'm also going to take a little bit and put it on top of the concealer just to show you how it really does make it look more intense. So you can see right over here, this is the concealer, how it really does grab on and just make it look super, super intense. So you can see how overall that really does make a big difference. Okay, so now that we have our concealer on the inside corner of our eye, now grab a traditional eyeshadow brush, so just a basic eyeshadow brush, and I'm gonna dip into a loose powder. Whenever dealing with a loose powder, always shake it before you open it, and then kind of tap on the lid to make sure all the product goes down and then work off the back of your lid. You can see how there's a lot of product on there. You don't have to dip your brush into that. Just work off the back of the lid. That's enough product, especially when you're dealing with loose pigment. You don't wanna have any fallout on your face. So just tap off the excess just to make sure there isn't a lot of fallout. And then we're just going to stipple this right on the inside corner. And you can instantly see how it grabs onto that under eye concealer and just looks super, super bright and super, super electric. Again, do stippling motions and that's just with one coat. Look how beautiful, how bright, how shiny, how reflective it is. Now I'm gonna do one more coat because I like it to look a little bit more intense. I'm just gonna take it right over here. And especially for this look that I'm going for, I want it to be super bright and super electric, great. Now once we're done with that, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. 
tapping off the excess. Perfect, now once you're done applying that reflective pigment to the inside corner of your eye, now we're gonna grab our clean eyeshadow brush, go ahead and clean it off either on your hand tissue or on your in-between eyeshadow brush cleaner. And now we're just going to soften it and blend the work. You'll notice that I'm softening and blending my work right after I deposit the color. If you wait until the very end to mix and blend all the colors, it will mix everything together and it's not gonna look soft. It's just gonna look like a color wash on your eye. So it's very important that you do soften and blend your colors step by step, just like that. Great, beautiful. Okay, so now that we are done with our eyeshadow, now we're gonna move on to our eyebrows. I'm gonna use my favorite eyebrow pencil from Shop Miss A. It is only $1 and it is comparable to name brand items. It is a wax pencil. And if you wanna buy a wax pencil over the counter, it could range from $40 to $50, which is super pricey for an eyebrow pencil. And they do run out fast. They don't even have a lot of products. So the fact that this one is a dollar, I have about five of them, and one of them lasts me about two months. So it's an amazing value. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my brows and it comes with a spoolie right on the end. And another cool feature that's um, really cool about this eyebrow pencil, it is a angled eyebrow pencil. So it's not a really fine pencil where you have to sit there and draw hairs. It really does kind of fill in the brows um, quickly so you don't really have to um, create the brow. So you always want to comb your eyebrows in the direction that you want them to go in. So comb your eyebrows, great, just like that. If you guys have any questions on how to shape your eyebrows for your specific face shape, I help you in my eyebrow tutorial. I give you some great tips on how to trim, tweeze, and shape your brows, and also fill your brows. So that's a really great tutorial if you guys wanna refer back to that video. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and fill my brows. I love this pencil, you guys. I cannot stress to you how amazing it is. So beautiful, so streaky, or er, not, so beautiful, so streaky. So beautiful, not streaky at all. Super, super pigmented. I love it. Great, now once you're done filling in your brow again, just go through with your spoolie. And once you brush your eyebrows after you fill them, the spoolie kind of gives like little hair marks and makes it look even more natural. Great. So now I'm going to fill in my other side. Don't worry if your eyebrows aren't symmetrical, you guys. It's okay. It's normal for them not to be completely, completely, you know, even. So don't beat yourself up for it. If you have thinner brows, Put a little bit more eyeshadow underneath the arch of your brow. It will make your um, eyebrows look thicker. Great. And again, just comb the eyebrows afterward to make them look even more natural. Double check. Make sure they're even. I feel like this one can use a little bit more right over here. Perfect. And we'll leave it like that. Great. Now, once we are done filling in our brows, now I'm gonna move on to the eyes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my liner and lashes off camera, and then I'm gonna meet you right back here to do the lip tutorial. So I'll be right back. All right, I just got done doing my eyeliner and lashes. If you guys have any trouble creating a wing liner or simply applying false lashes, I have a separate video where I teach you step-by-step step how to apply them if you guys have any trouble. All right, so now that we are done doing our liner and lashes, now we're gonna move on to the lips. For my lip liner today, I'm gonna be using a Shop AOA lip liner for, again, only $1 in the shade Naked. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and line my lips. I like to warm up my lip liner on the back of my hand first before I take it directly on the lip. And then I'll start to shade in my lips. I like to start with the bottom lip. And just shade. I also don't like to do a harsh line either. It kind of holds my lip liner at an angle, so I'm almost shading it in. It's not like a really harsh, intense line. But don't shade it in completely because we want it to be really light right here because that's what makes your lips look fuller. Okay. 
All right, once we're done aligning the lips, now we're gonna move on to our lipstick. My lipstick that I'm gonna be using today is from Bobbi Brown. It is from her Lux Lip Collection in the shade Retro Coral. So this is a really beautiful coral lip color. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply this on my lips. I like to warm up my lipstick too. I feel like it makes it more pigmented. And you can see how I'm kind of stippling on the lipstick for color. I'm not swiping it on. And I'm placing it right at the inside of my mouth. And then gently mix your lips together. And now let's go back in a little bit here. And you can see I'm not taking it completely over the lip liner. So just like that. So you still want to see the definition around your lips. You don't want it to be completely peach all over. It doesn't really look flattering, so I like to have a little bit of my lip liner kind of shine and peek through just like that. I feel like overall it kind of makes it look more flattering and more beautiful when you have a little bit of definition around your lip. So now I'm just going to take a teeny bit more and just kind of amplify the bottom lip a little bit. Great, now once we're done with that, now I'm going to show you how I like to blend and mix everything together. So now I'm going to take my lip gloss. My lip gloss that I'm using today is from KKW Beauty in the shade Juicy. This is a really, really beautiful peachy color. So now this is what we're going to take and physically put all over our lips. So start with the bottom lip. Always start on the inside right over here because that's where the light hits you directly is right at the center of your lips right over here. So always start right at the center and you can see how instantly how the light just goes directly to the center of your mouth and also makes your lips look fuller. So start right at the center, go outward. And then also we're going to take this right up over the lip liner. So the lip gloss is what's doing all the work for you and mixing and blending everything together so that way you don't have a lot of product on your lips. And there we go, a soft peach glam. Now once we're done applying our lip gloss, it's very important that we do set our makeup with a makeup setting spray. So always shake your makeup setting spray, spray it about two feet away from your face so that way you coat your whole entire face. Don't just directly spray it in one area. Make sure you go all the way around to set your whole entire face. All right, you guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this soft peach glam tutorial. It's definitely one of my favorite looks. You can get away with it in any season. It's just so dewy, so beautiful, and it also complements every skin tone. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment me down below, and I can't wait to see you on another episode where we're going to be playing with so many fun different lip colors. Take care and have a beautiful day. Bye-bye.